All right, this lovely image that we see here uh, is a karyotype. Now, uh, a karyotype is uh, a picture or an image of chromosomes uh, that have been uh, rearranged uh, to form ordered pairs. So again, a karyotype is an image of, uh, say, ordered or organized uh, chromosomes. Now, uh, this is taken from uh, a diploid or a somatic cell, uh, usually in a metaphase of um, mitosis. So uh, again, we get these highly condensed chromosomes, and then we simply pair them up. Now, uh, one of the characteristics of chromosomes, or some of the characteristics of chromosomes, you may notice uh, by looking at this image is that uh, they will vary by size. So certainly some contain a lot more DNA uh, than others. They'll also uh, vary by their centromere position. So the little waste uh, that we've talked about uh, on these chromosomes can be more central or they can be more uh, distal or toward one end or the other. Uh, and finally, um, again, sort of obvious, but they will differ by their banding pattern. That results uh, from uh, the uptake of different types of stains uh, by different portions uh, of the chromosome. So they'll each uh, have their unique size, shape, uh, and banding pattern. Now, uh, an important term here uh, is related to uh, chromosomes that share similarities. These are homologous chromosomes. Uh, sometimes referred to as homologs. Now, uh, these homologous chromosomes are going to uh, have similar characteristics so if you refer back to uh, these previous characteristics of chromosomes homologous chromosomes are going to have similarities in size uh, centromere position and banding pattern which you certainly see uh, when you look at the karyotype here uh, now they'll also have uh, well, another characteristic is that you get one from each parent. So when we look at this karyotype, you know, one of these number one chromosomes came from the mother, one came from the biological father. And an important note uh, when looking at these chromosomes is that they will have the same genes for uh, particular traits. Now, I do want to make mention of the fact that while they have, uh, say, a gene for hair color, uh, the alleles or forms of the gene may vary. Because remember, you're getting uh, this information from different parents. So uh, let's say, you know, this is the locus or location for a gene for hair color. Well, one parent may have uh, passed on an allele for uh, darker hair, and the other parent may have passed on an allele for lighter hair. The allele for hair color is at the same locus or location on both chromosomes, but the particular allele that is inherited uh, may differ uh, by parent. All right now, when we look at uh, all of these chromosomes collectively, this is referred to as the organism's genome. And uh, simply put, uh, a genome is all of the organism's genes. Sorry, I'm sort of mixing cursive and print here. Uh, let's see, now, uh, these different types of uh, chromosomes have uh, different, 
denominations here. Uh, the first 22 pairs, so uh, chromosomes one through 22 are referred to as the autosomes. So sometimes when we get into genetics, you'll hear uh, conditions re being referred to as autosomal conditions. That simply means that they're found on chromosomes one through 22 and uh, make note of the fact that you get one from each parent. They are homologous. Now, uh, this final pair here uh, is special. This 23rd pair uh, are the sex chromosomes. So, uh, the sex chromosomes are not necessarily homologous because you can get, um, in the case of males, an X chromosome uh, and then uh, a Y chromosome uh, from the father. So these are not homologous. Uh, but this 23rd pair determines the sex of the individual. So chromosomes 1 through 22, the autosomes have no determination uh, on sex uh, and are homologous and uh, the 23rd pair uh, may not be homologous and they do contain uh, genes uh, that do determine an organism's sex. Okay, now uh, what I'd like to do is uh, transition slightly and look at uh, two basic categories of human cells. All right, now, uh, one type of cell uh, would be the sex cells, uh, sometimes referred to as the gametes. Now, uh, the gametes are haploid. Haplo means half, so they have half the normal complement of chromosomes. Uh, so they only have one set uh, of chromosomes. Uh, now, when we talk about sets of chromosomes, that's represented with the letter N. So when we say haploid cells have one set of chromosomes, we represent that with one N, or more commonly just the letter N. Now these cells are made in the gonads, so only in one location, uh, the gonads being the ovaries in females or testes in males. And uh, let's see, uh, they are derived from germ cells. So they come from germ cells. So these specific uh, cells uh, go through a couple of rounds of meiosis and uh, create, or a couple of rounds of cell division through meiosis and create these haploid or 1N uh, gametes. In humans, that means the gametes will have 23 chromosomes. Now, uh, the other type of cells are the somatic cells. And somatic cells are basically anything that's not a sex cell or gamete. So you can say all the others. So it's sort of a motley crew, but they have uh, some basic characteristics. Uh, they tend to be diploid. There are some uh, anucleate cells that don't have uh, genes in them, or nuclei in them. But they tend to be diploid. Uh, if they have diploid, diplo means double. So they have two sets of chromosomes. That's represented with uh, 2N. And uh, these are the more common body cells. You can think of cells in the liver, the skin, uh, you know, cardiac uh, muscle, skeletal muscle. They'll all be nucleate, uh, nucleated cells and um, uh, be referred to as diploid uh, or somatic cells. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at here is oops, um, this image somewhere. Okay. Well, maybe we're not going to see anything. We'll stop there. Take a break.